Hi, Kenji. Hey. All right. So we recently got a listener question mm -hmm. on management of rib fractures. Their specific question, and they're not coming from a trauma facility, mm -hmm. was when they have patients with three or more rib fractures, they actually need to, by protocol, transfer that patient to a trauma facility for management of these rib fractures. That seems like a pretty aggressive protocol to me, but I want to kind of go through this stepwise and talk about a few different scenarios. So let's start with one. You have that patient. Everyone climbs up a ladder and falls. They fall about three feet. They land on their left side. They've got, say, three rib fractures. Their vital signs are perfect. They're not hypoxic. Um, their chest x-ray shows no pneumothorax, no hemothorax. Do we actually even need to admit this type of patient? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that uh, the the overall question is excellent, and uh, um, I'm hoping that uh, by the end of this, we'll get to a good answer uh, back for that uh, person that posed that question. But specific to this patient that is otherwise completely well, and we do see some rib fractures, as long as we're sure that there's nothing in the pleural space that needs to be treated, um, and they're oxygenating okay, the real question is, can we control the pain for this patient using oral pain medications? And if the answer is yes, then I think they can go home. Um, you know, as a, as a general rule, um, the most important thing is to rule out those um, things that require intervention, oxygen or a chest tube, and then ask the question, can we control the pain? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it really comes down to. Okay, so let's go into a couple of like finer details. What about rib fracture location? I think more commonly we see a little bit lower rib fractures, maybe seven through 10. Usually when I see someone with higher rib fractures, one through three, I think that's probably a pretty strong force. I'm thinking about, could there be more neurovascular injury? Does that change your consideration in terms of sending home or keeping? No, that's a great question. So, um, I agree with you, and I have a couple of comments. I think the first uh, comment is that, yes, if the fractures are localized to the higher ribs, especially that first rib um, classically that we talk about, more force is required just ergonomically mm -hmm. to break those ribs. And so as a direct result, we know that there's probably more force that was applied to that chest wall and to the lung underneath. So I think the location of the rib fractures is important. However, when it comes to the practical decision-making as mm -hmm. to what we're going to do, and again, there's no um, hemothorax or pneumothorax that we're dealing with, it really, again, comes down to, are we able to oxygenate this patient? Are they safe to go home from that uh, viewpoint? And then secondly, can we control that pain? And I think that, you know, the physician looking after that patient, when they see that there's a bunch of ribs broken um, up high, it should make them think a little more that more force was required mm -hmm. to break these ribs. But when it comes down to the decision-making, we won't make that decision to admit or to send home based just on the location of a higher rib versus lower ribs, if that makes sense. Totally. I think it's, you put it into the consideration, but just because it's the third rib doesn't buy you admission. And I know what everybody wants to know, the magic number of rib fractures. Does this magic number exist? Because in this listener's question, it's three or more, you're going. Is there a magic number where you're like, you look great, but you broke X number of ribs, you're staying? Yeah. So I think I have two comments for that. The, the first is, that the answer is no. The absolute number of ribs doesn't make a difference. However, the more ribs that are broken, again, the more force was applied to that chest wall. And so as a direct result of that, there's the potential for there to be more pain, to be more underlying pulmonary contusion. Uh, there may be a higher likelihood of having a pneumo or a hemothorax that requires treatment. So Although the actual absolute number of ribs that are fractured doesn't make a difference, knowing how many ribs were fractured um, is important because it just means more force was applied. Um, so yeah, so that that's So I'm not the, gonna get the, my magic number. Exactly. Okay. 